subway station. A man stands on a deserted platform waiting for a train. In his hand, an attaché case. From deep within, he hears the sound of the approaching train. The blackness of the tunnel fascinates him. He takes a breath, closes his eyes, and edges forward. Suddenly, he is filled with the desire to jump onto the tracks. The warm air caresses his face as the roar of the oncoming train gets louder and louder. The headlights speak towards him. He fingers the case. He sways forward. His eyes flash. This train, I don't know, it's too Anna Karenina. You don't like the train? No, it's been done before. It has to be somewhere else, somewhere... Oh, what, what's the word? Else, somewhere else. Breathtaking. That's it. Like a cliff's edge. A man stands on a cliff's edge. That's better. No, it comes to him in a flash. I mean, it's not premeditated. He hasn't driven there all day thinking, today I'm going to throw myself from a cliff. <laughs> You have a problem with the cliff? Oh, he was on his way to a meeting. He was a little bit behind schedule, and then suddenly, in the subway, in a flash, Okay, he... good. So we agreed. The cliff's good. Go on. Tell the story. A man stands on a cliff. His whole life behind him. Before him lies uncertainty and fear. The sun is bright on the horizon. The wind blows his hair as he steps forward to the edge of the... Yes. No, I can't do it. I'm sorry. I can't do it. I mean, it cannot be somewhere else. Now, do you think the cliff is too, um, oh, what's, what's the word? Exactly. Yeah, you're right. You're right. A skyscraper. A giant skyscraper overlooking a vast city in a state of industrial decline. Okay. A man stands on the ledge of a tall skyscraper, looking out over a once proud city. His city, yeah? Yeah, his home. It's in his veins. That's good. It gives him a sense of identity. No, he hates his city, the people, the misery. All of his life he's wanted to escape. Mm, OK, poverty's good. Rags to riches it gives him motivation. He's struggled all his life to get away. He's crushed other people to get to the top. But now that he's got there, he thinks, was it worth it? Did I hurt all these people just for this? The city is beneath him. He wants to jump. No, no, John, you've got it all wrong. This man gets to the top. He's on this skyscraper, right? He's looking down on the city below, and he says, Yes, I've done it. He's a success. No, that is where I draw the line. The story is, after all, a political story. <laughs> no, John. No, 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 I don't think so. It's about one man's quest, right? Well, it has to be about one man's quest or one woman's quest. I mean, that's what stories are about. <laughs> no, it's about what happens when someone abandons everyone he ever loved in the pursuit of success, only to find that he's lost the love and the respect of everyone that he ever knew. Quote, Every story must enable a sympathetic character to overcome a series of difficult, seemingly insurmountable obstacles to achieve the realization of a compelling desire." Unquote. But I don't want my story to be compromised. It'll be a lot more compromised if it never gets seen. Well, we'll be in touch. No, I think you were, you were right the first time. I think the cliff is fine. We should, uh, we should go with the cliff. A man stands on a cliff sedge. Where is this cliff of yours? Well, I don't know. It's your cliff. Now, Capri has good cliffs. So does Monte Carlo. OK, then. A man stands on a cliff sedge, overlooking the bay at Monte Carlo. His feet move closer and closer to the edge. In his hand, he clutches an old leather attache case. So what's in the case? A building with suspense. Don't keep us waiting, John. What's in the case? OK, his um, credit cards, his address book, some money. A photograph of his ex-wife standing next to his son. A photograph of a younger woman standing on the beach in Spain. Two socks, a toothbrush, a porno magazine. Two packs of Marlboro, a three-pack of condoms. A subway map and the uh, stack of paper. Stack of paper? Jesus, John, your lead character is a writer. Is that a problem? Yes! He should be a real person. 
a real person. Yes. Someone who loves and hates and runs and fights and touches real objects and lifts heavy things and falls down and gets shot at. Eats and makes love and works really hard to bring home real money to feed a real baby. Well? Well, writers just write. OK, fine. He's a writer, but his writing's not important, OK? He doesn't want to be a writer anymore. All you have to know about that stack of paper is that it's his whole life's work and it just doesn't matter, OK? A man stands on a cliff's edge. He's just been offered the first big break of his life, a real opportunity. He closes his eyes and lifts one foot over the edge. He will walk away or he will jump. Who cares? I don't believe this guy. I mean, he, he has no background, he has no charisma. I mean, who the hell is he anyway? I was just coming to that. I mean, if he has no background, then he has no motivation. And if he has no motivation, then there's nothing to drive him over these seemingly insurmountable obstacles to the fulfillment of his desires. No, I'm sorry. I have no sympathy for him. None whatsoever. OK. He has been hurt terribly. By who? By the forces of consumerism. No, 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 no. Jesus, not again. No give, no, give me something I can see. Something real, a person. The incarnation of these evil forces, the nemesis. OK. He was hurt by a person, by many people. He was hurt by people, like you. A woman? Yes, of course. Now, that's good. That gets him our sympathy right from the start. OK, tell me about the woman. What woman? You said there was a woman. There must be a woman. Are you telling me this story is about one character and it's a man? <laughs> I'd want to hear that. No, you're right. There's definitely a woman. Describe the woman. The woman is very attractive. She's in her early 30s, although she looks much younger. They are standing together at the cliff's edge. The waves crash on the rocks far below. But this cliff's edge, it's been done before. I mean, what are they doing there? Looking at the sunset? No, 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 it's too cliched. I mean, what, why are they just standing there like that? OK, fine. They are not standing together at the cliff's edge. I've got it. They're lying together. Lying together? At the cliff's edge? Are you serious? They're not lying together at the cliff's edge. Oh, of course not. They're lying together indoors, in a hotel room in the penthouse suite of a skyscraper in Manhattan. In a flea-bike hotel on the south side. In a vast apartment overlooking the city, the wind billowing through the crepe machine curtains as the sun streams onto their naked bodies entwined in the dancing shadows. He lifts her in his arms past a grand piano to the vast white linen bed. Her legs unfold around his back, pushing him deeper and deeper inside. His fingers trace the line of her spine. His lips brush her neck. Her nails score his back as she moves on top of him. Her hair covers his face, sticking to his now wet skin. She closes her eyes and feels his warm breath against her eyelids. For seconds, she has forgotten everything. She forgets who she is, where she is. She wants to lose herself, to forget everything. She wants only to feel, to really feel, as if for the first time. Wide shot, the two fall onto the bed. Her reaction shot as she moves on top of him. Cut to his reaction shot. His eyes close, dissolve to wide shot through the crepe machine curtains to establish the passage of time. He can feel her grip around him, pushing him further and further to the edge of oblivion. Dissolve to close up. Her fingers grip the sheets. Cut to medium shot. She throws back her head. Cut to... She screams, she mourns, and she gasps. Wait! But just then... Just then... A moment of revelation. As they lie together on the edge of oblivion, something clicks. She won't let herself go. Oh, no climax? Oh, Jesus, John, you've got to have a narrative peak. She won't let herself do it. She won't go over the edge. Wait, are we back at the cliff top? She lacks the courage to let go. She clings to her loneliness. She's never more alone than when she makes love to a man. And in that instant, she knows she'll never see him again. You've lost me completely. What, what happens next? How does it end? They have just made love. Without waking him, she gets to her feet and walks towards the windows. The curtain's still blowing in the wind. 
She opens the glass doors and steps out onto the balcony overlooking the city far below. Her hair is golden in the sunlight. Her body's crushed by the fall. No! How does it end? They have just made love. She turns to him, her body silhouetted against the light, and silently she whispers to herself the words. The words? I love you. No, no, no. Cliché, cliché. How many times have I heard this? OK, OK. She uh, turns away from him in close-up. Uh, cut to wide shot, she turns back. She's suddenly in a different room with a different man on the other side of the world. No, no more clichés, no tricks. How does it end? It never ends. That's a problem. A woman alone in a hotel on an airplane, flying across the world, running. No, no, not running. Running's too passive. Chasing. Chasing, then. Chasing what? Something elusive, something she cannot have. <laughs> How disappointing. Don't blame me, it's the character. Who is she anyway? You find her unsympathetic. She's very beautiful, I can see that, but she likes a sense of purpose. I mean, who the hell is she anyway? Well, I don't know. What do you think? Quick, the first thing off the top of your head, she's a... She's a revolutionary, she's a terrorist, she's the young rebel who eventually becomes everything she ever despised. Mm, there's two Patty Hurst. OK, OK, then she's a mother, or mother-to-be? A mother and a child. People love that. No, 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 I don't think so. The poor little rich girl who has everything but can find pleasure in nothing. And she's the poor girl from the poor family who has fought tooth and nail to get to the top. No. She's a woman who, no, who dedicates I, I... her life to the poor and the suffering and who believes that in her own small way she's making the world a better place. She's the ruthless individualist who will destroy anyone who gets in her way. The woman who has turned to addiction in the absence of any other compelling desire. She's a woman who never got over the trauma of her childhood and now spends every minute of her life reliving the past. The woman who is fatally drawn to violent and abusive men. She's a woman who is a carbon copy of her mother and makes the same mistakes over and over again. The woman who is fundamentally free to, to reinvent herself at every turn. I mean, she could be anything. A prophet, a president, a prostitute, a policewoman. I can't think of anything else. Why not? No, nope, that's it. Can't think of anything else. You're not taking this seriously. Look, we had this woman who doesn't believe in anything, who doesn't love anyone, who can't commit to anything, who can't make a choice in case she makes a mistake. I mean, she's got no goal, no story, no character, no motivation, nothing. Well, I'm sorry. She's your character. But what should she do? What does she want? What does she want? Will you tell me? Well, I don't know. Really, I, I don't know. Well then, OK. She doesn't know what she wants. She spends her life chasing other people's stories, those who have something to say. She needs them, but she hates them. It's a tragedy. She sounds like a terrible person. Yeah. But then so is he. He's just like she is. He is? Yeah, absolutely. He doesn't believe in anything, absolutely nothing. He doesn't even have faith in himself. But then... But then? But then maybe there is hope. Maybe he could believe in... in her. He could believe in her? Yeah, he could, if only she could believe in him. Believe in him. Maybe then, between them, that would be something. It would be something. Maybe then, between them, they could make... They could make a story. Between them, they could make a story worth telling.
has it got a future? I'd have to see a script. Do you have a script? No. What happens in the end? The end? No, that was just the start. Oh, I see. So he didn't jump. No. It's a shame. I thought he was a man of principle. But the, uh, the underlying question... I'm not sure if I can see the point. I... What is the point? Well, are we going to take this further? Is it a, um, a deal? We, it, what do those words mean? It means a story. We means, um... I'm sorry. I can't see the story. <laughs>